This is Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review with your college football bowl preview. As we continue to look at all of these college football bowl games, we're going to look at the Thursday, December 29 and Friday, December 30 bowl slate in this video, as, long, uh, as well as a video best bet uh, at the end of this video. Let's go to South Florida, South Carolina. We've got South Florida, double-digit favorite in this game, laying 10 total, 62, 62 and a half. And I think South Florida's motivation in this game is a little bit of a concern uh, because coaching change, of course, taking place. Willie Taggart moving on to another location, and in comes Charlie Strong uh, taking over this South Florida uh, head coaching job. Transition is always maybe a little bit of a bet against situation here uh, in the bowl games. And South Carolina, great job by Will Muschamp really uh, here with this team. They got better as the season progressed, got them to 6-6, six and six, got them to a bowl game when there was very little expectations on the Gamecocks prior to the season. And I like the decision he made midway through the season, enough with the horse crap play at the quarterback spot from Perry Orth and all these other guys, McIlwain. He went with Jake Bentley, the, the, the quarterback of the future for this team, uh, even though he's a freshman, uh, gave him the starting job down the stretch. Yeah, there was growing pains, as you would expect, but he does have a ton of raw talent. He's going to have bull practice and preparation time to get ready for this game, get prepared, get used to the offense, and I think it's going to benefit South Carolina. I think they'll be excited uh, to be bowling here in this game. I think they're perhaps a live dog. I would look to South Carolina plus the points uh, in that football game uh, and maybe a game that also might be higher scoring, but I think South Carolina maybe has a chance to hang around in that one. We've got Arkansas taking on Virginia Tech uh, in the next bowl game. Uh, I'll tell you what, Virginia Tech, very good season for Justin. Justin Fuente, and I do have concerns with this up-tempo, uh, very balanced Virginia Tech offense. Gerard Evans, the quarterback, they can also run the football very effectively. And now they're facing an Arkansas defense that, you know, against up-tempo and more potent offenses on their schedule, uh, things weren't pretty for Arkansas. Mississippi State shredded them. Ole Miss shredded them. Auburn hung over 50 points on them. Alabama took them apart uh, with their offense. So I think Arkansas might be a little bit of a difficult matchup for them. Even with the extra time to prepare and practice, may not be easy for them to shut down Gerard Evans and the Hokies offense. On the flip side, though, I like the Arkansas offense. You know, they're they're able to run the football. They're balanced. And they have, I think, a better quarterback than they've had in the past with Austin Allen. Austin Allen, I think, could actually be even better than his brother, uh, Brandon Allen, when it all comes down to it. So, you know, Arkansas is always dangerous in this underdog price range. I really think Virginia Tech, though, a team I've liked all season long, uh, may not be willing to bet against them here, although, you know, Arkansas is a dog as always. You'd rather be taking points with Brett Bielema's Razorbacks team usually than you would laying points with them. So maybe Arkansas hangs around. I think the best bet, uh, look for a higher scoring game. In fact, we're going to come back to this game for video best bet uh, when it's all said and done. Oklahoma State, Colorado, uh, very interesting handicap here because you've got two teams that lost their, ability, their chance to win the conference championship. We know Colorado got bombed by Washington in the Pac-12 championship game, and Oklahoma State, uh, they got uh, beat by Oklahoma in the Battle of Bedlam uh, at the end of the season, and that was the Big 12 uh, championship that was on the line there. So both of these teams losing out to the, in their conference championship opportunities, and I think the biggest thing to look for in this bowl game is who is more excited because, you know, coming off losses like that, you're never quite sure, Colorado in particular, uh, you want to be concerned with them. And they've also had a little bit of a change to their coaching staff. Jim Levitt, uh, the defensive coordinator here with this Colorado team, uh, he's moved on to Oregon to take that same post with the Ducks. So a little bit of a fl uh, change uh, with the coaching staff could be a little bit of a detriment here uh, to make Mike McIntyre's Buffalo's team heading into this bowl game. And again, it's a team that was had a great season, really wanted to win the Pac-12 they're going to be happy to be bowling, but you know, and they were flirting with play, the playoffs just a little bit. Uh, you worry about Colorado, where their mindset is, practice level, preparation level, especially with the, you know the change at the DC coaching spot, uh, defensive coordinator role uh, changed for this bowl game. Just something you want to be aware of, and maybe get a little bit once we get closer to Thursday, December 29th, Really get a sense of where Colorado is in terms of motivation. Oklahoma State too. I mean, you know, they lost to Oklahoma Big 12 championship game. We'll see if Mike Gundy's able to get the troops going again. I will say this: Colorado's defense was very, very good. 
But when they stepped up in class against some pretty good offenses, pretty good quarterbacks, wasn't always pretty for them. And they're going to be facing Mason Rudolph and a pretty balanced Oklahoma State offense here. So could be a little bit of a tricky matchup. Right now I'm leaning Oklahoma State plus three uh, in this game. As I mentioned in the previous college football bull video, Pac-12 is a little bit of a, uh, maybe a bet against conference for me. I thought it was Washington. Maybe USC and then Colorado and then a bunch of mediocre teams after that and teams that really didn't play all that well uh, this season. So again, I have some doubts the Pac-12 is going to be a money-making conference here in bowl season. And for that reason, maybe Oklahoma State, uh, as an underdog, catching points here may be worth a look. But again, get inside the minds of those two teams, I would say, read up on that closer to kickoff. All right, let's go to the Friday Bull Slate, December 30th, TCU taking on Georgia. I'll tell you what, I was not impressed with TCU. Down season for Gary Patterson's team. Uh, the, the Kenny Hill was a vi was erratic as it gets at the quarterback spot. He did not impress me. They had terrible season finale against Kansas State, played a horrible football game. Uh, defense Defense was not as good as it's been in the past. Uh, you know, we think of TCU as a pretty good defensive team uh, in previous seasons. That wasn't always the case this year. Uh, I have, I'm not really enamored with the TCU side. The question is, Georgia, obviously they were a very erratic, inconsistent football team, but they did show signs of life, played a little bit better down the stretch. Jacob Eason, the quarterback, I think, showed some positive signs of development at the quarterback position. Nick Chubb, great running back, so they're going to be relying on him. And Nick Chubb's just also uh, announced that he's returning for his senior season, so so I think that might give a little bit of a boost of adrenaline here for Georgia, knowing that, you know, a building block, a key building block and having a better season next year is coming back and Nick Chubb at the running back spot. I think Georgia's going to look at this game as let's try to win. Let's try to give ourselves a springboard from a, you know, a sort of a retooling season, you could say, with new coach and Kirby Smart. Let's use this game and maybe a win as a springboard into next season, whereas TCU, this is a team that's used to, you know, being in bigger bowl games, having better seasons than what they've had. You just worry, where is that mindset going to be for them? I think motivationally there could be a little bit of an edge here for Georgia, and I'm not convinced uh, at this stage uh, that Georgia wasn't playing better than TCU down the stretch. So right now I would lean Georgia, pick them minus one uh, in that game. Uh, North Carolina taking on Stanford. Very big news here in this game is obviously Christian McCaffrey not playing, opting to prepare for the NFL draft and sit out this bowl game against North Carolina in the Sun Bowl. Uh, I'll tell you what, I don't trust, and for that reason, I don't trust Stanford's offense to move the ball consistently in this game. I know North Carolina's defense, no shutdown defense by any stretch, but when Stanford didn't have McCaffrey on the field, it was a struggle. Now, before when they didn't have him on the field, Ryan Burns was the quarterback for most of those games. Now they have Keller Christ. Keller Christ was at least a little bit better, a little bit more competent at the quarterback spot than Burns for Stanford, but he's still not a guy that exactly lit it up. He's still a quarterback that relied on a solid ground game and McCaffrey being in the backfield to provide balance in this Stanford offense. And now you take him out of the equation. I'm just not so 100% sold on Stanford moving the ball and up and down the field here uh, in this game. And North Carolina's offense was very good. Mitch Trubisky, a fine season, but I find when he got the going got tougher uh, late in the season, they started to bog down a little bit North Carolina's offense, and when they played some better teams, better defenses, it was a little bit more of a struggle here for North Carolina. So, uh, you know, I was really looking to back Stanford. I would still lean that way, two and a half, minus two and a half, minus three in this game, but the McCaffrey absence is a big one, and the Stanford offense laying points without, obviously, their most explosive playmaker is definitely a concern here for me. So I'm a little less enthusiastic about Stanford now uh, as I was prior to the McCaffrey announcement. Uh, South Alabama, Air Force. Air Force laying nearly two touchdowns in this game, and you can understand why. I mean, Air Force is a pretty good team. South Alabama doesn't really see the triple option very often. Now, they do have the benefit of lots of time to prepare and practice for it, but... Uh, Air Force, to me, uh, should have matchup edges. But do they have matchup edges enough to lay two touchdowns? That's the question. It's Air Force from, a, again, a Mountain West conference that I thought is a bet against conference coming into this bowl season. And sure enough, what did New Mexico do? They didn't cover the number uh, in their bowl game. Yeah, Wyoming did, but they needed a backdoor job. And we saw Colorado State get absolutely picked apart by Idaho uh, in their bowl game. So you've definitely got some concerns right now uh, with 
uh, Air Force, with any Mountain West team, at least in my opinion, laying this kind of price here and during the bowl season. It sure as hell didn't work for Colorado State laying this kind of number in their bowl game from that same conference. And South Alabama is just such a weird team. I mean, they've got a decent enough quarterback, and we do have to remember one thing about South Alabama. They've been very inconsistent, but first game of the season, Mississippi State won that game outright as three touchdown plus underdogs uh, in Starkville. Let's not forget that. This is a team that's capable, at least, uh, of stepping up against some non-conference foes. I probably would have a slight, slight lean to South Alabama. I'm not convinced Air Force doesn't win this game, but does look like an inflated number. Probably would have to lean to the Jaguars of South Alabama plus the 14. Nebraska, Tennessee, good luck finding out what Tennessee's mindset is for this game because that's really what this boils down to. They had SEC championship playoff aspirations coming into the season. They didn't even come close to matching any of those expectations, and they looked lethargic in their season finale against Vanderbilt. That looked like a team that didn't have much left gas left in the tank physically or mentally, and that's a concern here. Can Butch Jones uh, pump the guys up, get them ready to go again for this bowl game uh, when they didn't meet expectations that were so lofty for the volunteers coming into the season? But on the other side of the equation, you've got Nebraska, who had that super phony undefeated start to the season. Then when they started playing some be good teams finally in the Big Ten uh, conference season, that's when they started losing. They were nowhere near as good as that early undefeated start indicated. I'm not sure they have the uh, battle, the, the, the personnel in the trenches to, ha to, to handle Tennessee. But does Tennessee have the mindset to come out here and be excited and win a bowl game? I mean, it's a, it's two conflicting arguments that I have here uh, in this bowl game. It's a tough one to get involved with. So for that reason, probably going to end up passing and staying on the sidelines for the Cornhuskers and Vols. All right, Florida State taking on Michigan. Last bowl game, Friday, December the 30th. What a big one this is. For the Michigan Wolverines, this is the key for them. If they're excited and if they're fired up, they can win and cover this number. Uh, I'm not convinced Florida State, you know, is going to be able to move the ball in bunches against this caliber of defense. However, is Michigan excited as all hell to be in this bowl game when they were, you know, just this close to being in the playoff? Not that being in a New Year's Six bowl game like this should be any sort of, you know, lack of enthusiasm. This is a big-time bowl game, obviously, but... You know, you were so close to the playoff. You were an overtime loss away from against Ohio State from being in that 14 playoff, likely Michigan, and you didn't get there. Is there any lingering effect of disappointment? And, ah, oh, we just missed the playoffs. From what I've read early on, it's early on. This bowl game doesn't go until Friday, December 30th. Michigan looks like they are coming with a positive mindset. Hey, this is still a great bowl game. It's a New Year's Six bowl game against a great opponent in Florida State. We want to come out here and prove why we're, we've are we been a great team this season and why maybe we deserve to be in the playoff. Uh, so from just the early indication is that Michigan is not going to have a letdown or lack of motivation here uh, in this bowl game. Florida State, though, I mean, capable team. And Florida State give Jimbo Fisher... Uh, and that coaching staff credit kept them playing hard down the stretch of a season where, you know, ACC championship was out of the r possibilities, uh, playoff was out of the possibilities, and they still played well. They gave Clemson all they could handle. Big blowout win against the Florida Gators, their rivals uh, late in the season. Still kept playing good football. It's all about really can they run the football. Can Dalvin Cook make things happen against a Michigan team that's really been good at stopping the run? Because I don't know if DeAndre Francois going to be able single-handedly to lead this team to victory through the air in the passing game. They're going to need Cook to be able to make some things happen running the football. Very fascinating game. I will say this, Florida State's facing a pretty good uh, defense here, and Michigan's offense, you know, didn't exactly click on all cylinders down the stretch when the competition got tougher, when they faced Wisconsin, when they faced Ohio State. Uh, that Michigan offense wasn't exactly rolling, so I can understand why this total crashed down. It opened 58, it's now down to 52, 52 and a half. We've, we're looking at a five, five and a half point move toward the under, and I certainly wouldn't necessarily argue with that. It might be a game where the defense is maybe have a little bit of an edge, although you've lost quite a bit of value uh, at this point with the current total where it is. All right, let's wrap it up with our video best bet for the College Bowl slate on Thursday the 29th and Friday the 30th of December. We're going back to Arkansas, Virginia Tech. I think both offenses have a good showing here. Total's reasonable at 61. Let's not forget Virginia Tech plays up-tempo. 
Uh, but their defense sort of had some struggles late in the season. Clemson moved the ball well against them. I think Arkansas can move it. So can Virginia Tech. Let's go with Arkansas. Virginia Tech over 61. Rotation number 254. Let's look for a high-scoring affair. Razorbacks and Hokies over 61. Your college football bull bet video best bet for the games on Thursday the 29th and Friday, December 30th. All right, that'll wrap it up. I'm Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks.